Hi everybody and welcome to Out of the Gate, Daily Racing Forum's weekend handicapping preview program. I'm Dan Ullman. Thanks so much for watching. Here's what's coming up in this week's edition of Out of the Gate. It's the first Out of the Gate in 2019 and the newly turned three-year-olds are taking their first baby steps on the road to the Kentucky Derby. DRF handicappers Matt Bernie or Mike Beer and I will take a look at two three-year-old preview races, the Grade 3 Sham at Santa Anita, the Mucho Macho Man at Gulfstream. We'll also have bonus coverage of the Grade 2 San Gabriel Stakes for older horses on the turf. Time form U.S.'s David Aragona and Craig Milkowski will also preview the Sham and Nicole Russo's pedigree pick segment focuses on the Mucho Macho Man Stakes plus horses to watch and best bets. So let's break out of the gate. We begin out of the gate with our horse watch segment. Mike Beer, Naira analyst, you found something at the Big A from the Kieran McLaughlin barn. Yeah, a little bit of a late two-year-old debut here for a, a filly uh, named Enjoy It While We Can. Um, this filly actually, I think, ran deceptively well. Um, she's going to wind up finishing fourth in this race, but I think maybe she ran the second best race here. We're going to pick up the replay. Now, she didn't break great from the gate. She wasn't that sharp, sort of away at the back of the field. And they just decided to rush up and chase this winner on the leader. This is another Kieran horse on the lead. Alicia was a huge favorite here. Um, and enjoy it while we can't chase this horse the entire way up the back stretch and around the turn. You can see that she's already tired here, uh, but she's going to try and fight on to hold second, and she just can't quite do it. But I think all in all, she ran the second best race. This is the fastest half and quarter split on this card by a full second each of them. And she did a lot of work chasing a very good horse in here. I think she ran deceptively well in her debut. Matt, your horse watch also on the Naira circuit, overcoming severe trouble to win last time, all right? Yeah, all right, all right. I, you know, this is one of those instances where this is not a horse that you're going to be looking at for a stakes race or anything like that. But all right, all right is a low-level claimer for John Toscano. Now, Toscano's barn recently hasn't been all that strong. But at the same time, this horse, he just has this one rolling along. We're going to go back to New Year's Day. This was the most recent run for this horse. He's in for a $12,500 tag. You see him down on the inside, and he's starting to make some ground up, and he was a lot farther back than really when you drew the race up on paper. He figured to be a little bit more close to the front end. You know, unfortunately, he came from the back. You're going to see right now, he runs up on heels with that tiring pace setter down on the inside. And at that point, I don't think anyone would have faulted the horse for packing it in and saying, I don't want to go on with this. Instead, he's going to check here pretty badly. Luckily for him, the rail's going to open up. That one horse is going to float off. And this horse is going to shoot up through the inside, and he actually goes on and wins the race by more than a length. And in the grand scheme of things, I think you have to take a look at these kind of horses. Look, he's not any kind of real price in these races. He's been going off even money, 9 to 5, things like that. But this is the kind of horse. He's blue collar. He shows up. If they chose to move him up in class, I wouldn't be too concerned about it. If they chose to run him back at the 12-5 level, I wouldn't be concerned about it. This is his third consecutive victory. And I think the only good thing is about this, not just showing the fact that he'll go on with it and he'll fight, but the figure kind of regressed a little bit simply because of that. I think he would have run considerably faster. Perhaps you get a little bit of an inflated number next time out just because it looks like he took a step backward. Last Saturday at Gulfstream Park, they wrote on paper what looked to be a very salty turf sprint. The Janus Stakes and Vision Perfect for Jason Service turned that race into a procession. Let's watch the replay right now. He showed big speed from the beginning, put away pay any price, a pretty talented turf sprinter in his own right, and then exploded in the stretch to win with a 106 buyer speed figure. Service has World of Trouble, who made headlines with a 118 buyer performance when a runner-up to two-time Breeders' Cup turf sprint winner Stormy Liberal. But I wonder if this performance from Vision Perfect and the good form that Vision Perfect's been in basically for the last six months or so makes Service think about putting World of Trouble back on the dirt. In the form Vision Perfect's in right now, he can be the boss in South Florida in these turf sprint races. And maybe we'll see him again in the Breeders' Cup turf sprint. He put up a stinkeroo on Breeders' Cup Day in 2018, but I don't think he got the right trip, and I don't think he liked to give in the ground. Keep an eye on Vision Perfect. He's seven years old. He's earned over three quarters of a million dollars in his career, and he is a very talented turf sprinter. Let's get to some handicapping. The Grade 3 Sham Stakes is our DRF Bet Saturday Race of the Day. 
Let's take a look at the field for Saturday's DRF Bets Race of the Day. It's the Grade 3 Sham Stakes. $100,000 is the purse. Newly minted three-year-olds going a two-turn mile at Santa Anita. Carded is race number nine for expanded stakes previews of many of the major stakes races and much, much more. Head on over to video.drf.com or the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Bob Baffert has the even money favorite in this race. The number five Coliseum, impressive debut win stretching out for his second lifetime start. Matt, you're going with an old standby angle in Southern California, the other Baffert. I've, I've just gotten to the point, I said it when we went over the stakes preview, that I, Baffert in these two and now newly turned three-year-old races, I just don't have much interest in trying to beat him, so I'm not going to. I'm going to take the other Baffert in this spot. I think the outside runner much better. It's a little bit interesting in here. He broke his maiden in his career debut. We're going to take a look at that run right now. This was down at Del Mar, and okay, it's not going to be the most visually impressive thing. It's not nearly as impressive as Coliseum's victory was, but I thought this was fine enough. And then they made the kind of peculiar move to run him in a stakes race on grass, and he wasn't embarrassed that day, given the fact that there's not a ton of turf in the pedigree. On the heels of that, they ran him in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, draw a line through that. Apparently, he got a clump of dirt kicked in his eye, and obviously, it was a very boggy turf course. I feel like this is a dirt horse all along. The only thing that I can kind of come up for any kind of side weird excuse is that maybe he just didn't want to keep running all of his good horses against one another, and he tried to get this one some kind of a stakes victory on the grass. At the end of the day, I think he's interesting at 6-1, to one, but admittedly, the horse that beats Coliseum. There should be speed in this race. Coliseum went gate to wire. You've got one of the Peter Miller train entrants, the number three, Savagery, who should show good speed from the onset. You can make the argument, Mike, that the best closer is the battle-tested gunmetal gray. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I mean, I, I don't know if any of us, none of us are taking the big favorite here, Coliseum, on top of this race. I don't know if that's a smart move or not. Um, we'll see what that horse does stretching out off of his maiden win. But I feel like there's a real chance that Coliseum, just based on his pedigree, I don't know how far that horse is really going to want to go. And if you can't get the distance, this thing uh, might open up a little bit in the stretch. And I do think Gunmetal Gray, if nothing else, will be running at this horse late. We're going to go back two starts um, on his card to the Grade 1 American Pharaoh. Listen, he's no match for, for game winner in this race. He's not going to make it uh, all that close in the stretch, but I just like the way he's staying on um, at the end of this race. He gets up for second at the end. I think if he runs a race like this um, back uh, in the sham on Saturday, I think he'll be coming um, at these horses in the stretch. I think he just might he just might get there this time. And I think his subsequent start to Breeders' Cup Juvenile a little better than it looked on paper. He was far, far back, and I don't think he has to be that far back past some tired horses late in that race. Looks like a talented horse that should get some pace. I want the up-and-comer, the number two, Gray Magician, who was bet down to three to one against Improbable when trained by Hector Palma two starts back. That was a sprint race. Gray Magician finished third that day, was privately purchased uh, and sent over to Peter Miller, and he responded with this performance, his first start around two turns. Now, yes, he was odds on. I like the acceleration he showed with this three-wide burst to immediately get to the front, turning into the stretch. He settles it quickly, drawing off to win by almost 10 lengths with an 80 buyer speed figure. I think this horse has won a distance all along. He is a full brother to Lombo, who won the Robert Lewis last year. His dam was a stakes-winning turf router. Gray Magician has the tactical speed, I think, to slot in in behind the speeds in mid-pack and maybe get the jump on horses like Gunmetal Gray turning into the stretch. We'll find out how good the number five Coliseum is. We're all against him. Maybe we put him into the winner's circle. Nicole Russo's pedigree pick segment focuses on the Mucho Macho Man stakes at Gulfstream Park. And then Craig Milkowski from Time Form U U.S. looks at the pace projector for the sham. Hey everyone, happy new year from out of the gate and we've gotten right into it this week with the newly turned three-year-olds of 2019, including these guys. We're taking a look at the field for Saturday's Mucho Macho Man Stakes, going the one-turn mile at Gulfstream. This race serves as a local prep for the bigger events of the Trek's sophomore series, leading to the Holy Bull next month, followed by the Fountain of Youth and Florida Derby down the line. Let's analyze both the expected favorite for this race and a possible value horse. Now, Code of Honor is the standout of the group, making his first start since finishing second in the Grade 1 Champagne Stakes last October at Belmont, going a similar one-turn mile trip. Now, Code of Honor likely gets some speed and precocity from his female family, as Dam Reunited won the Thoroughbred Club of America sprinting at Keeneland, and is the Dam of Grade 2 place to juvenile Big League. 
That being said, I was shocked that this horse won first out at Saratoga last summer going six furlongs. He's from the first crop of European champion Noble Mission, of course, the brother to Frankel. And Noble Mission really blossomed as an older horse and at route distances. I really expected his offspring to do the same, but he was a top 10 freshman sire of 2018. I think anything his runners have done early on is a bonus, and I really do expect his runners, obviously including Code of Honor, to keep moving forward with ground and with experience. Now, Mijos, a maiden winner going six furlongs with a solid 80 buyer, represents another top 10 first crop sire whose foals will likely stretch out well in Cairo Prince. That young stallion was a graded winner routing both late as a three or two year old, excuse me, and early as a three year old before injury ended his career. He was the first son of Pioneer of the Nile to stud, and of course, that Empire Maker branch of the Unbridled line on fire right now, particularly in the American. Classic. Mijos is out of a young bear who has already produced two winners from his many starters. She is a half sister to grade one winning router Charla Ray. Uh, a few other quick notes just running through this short field. Two Florida breads down inside, if you'll watch here in Garter and Ty, who won the smooth air stakes going this mile at Gulfstream in December, and well defined, topped him at a one in a 16th mile stake last fall before finishing 12th at the Breeders Cup Juvenile. Garner and Ty is from the immediate family of multiple grade one winner Jackson Cat, who finished third at the Preakness, well defined by one of Florida's leading players with distinction. Trophy chaser, the impressive maiden winner last year, is from the family of champion Slanders, Surfside, and Air Force Blue. And rounding out the field is Gladiator King, who is by classic influence Perlin, but who thus far has done his best work at sprint distances. Thanks for tuning in this week at Out of the Gate. We're continuing right along with our first episode of 2019. Up next, let's get you over to Craig for a look at the Time Form U.S. Peace Projector. Hi, this is Craig Mokowski at Time Form U.S. for this week's edition of Out of the Gate. In this segment, I like to look at Time Form U.S. past performances with a uh, special emphasis on the Peace Projector. And uh, you can see in the upper right-hand corner of our preview page that we've identified the race uh, as expecting a hot pace, uh, looking at the red flag. We'll look a little closer in a second. But first, let's look at the three horses shown in front. Uh, we have Savagery, who's shown as a leader. He is shown as the front-running horse. Then we have Much Better, who's identified as a seven. And these will be the program numbers when the uh, final is drawn, when the race is drawn final later today, I believe. And then we have Coliseum, who's probably going to be the heavy favorite, the five from Bob Baffert. Uh, he's shown back in third, but we'll talk a little bit more about him in just a minute. Uh, let's start out looking at the pace projector a little closer. You can see I've highlighted the first three that, that are expected to be shown, uh, that are expected to be up front, led by number three, Savagery. Uh, we do show a note down at the bottom that he's also adding blinkers for this start. Uh, that is part of the pace projector when horses add or take off blinkers. We do adjust somewhat for, for that based on the studies we've done on the effect of blinkers at an early speed. Uh, let's start with Savagery, and you can see pretty clearly why he's shown up front uh, with a clear margin even. Uh, he, he's always shown speed. He started out in a mile turf race, but all of his dirt races, he went back to sprinting uh, four times. He was always right on or near the lead in those races. And then last out, he tried two turns on dirt for the first time in the uh, low south futurity. And he sat right off the really speed, speedy Improbable, who's one of your early favorites for the Kentucky Derby, uh, another Bob Baffert horse that, that was just really impressive that day. But he was able to hang right with him, actually made a move, got right up neck and neck with him after three quarters of a mile before fading away. So it won't be really any surprise at all to see this horse in the front. Uh, one, one thing I do as far as this horse being a contender, uh, I'm not a big fan of his despite his early speed and uh, perceived advantage. And, and a big part of that is looking at trainer Peter Miller, who's uh, he's one of the top trainers we have in the game, but he really tends to specialize with older horses and sprinters. Uh, if you dig deeper, you can see he's overall rated 93 for us, but when you drop down the three-year-old stakes, he's only a 67, he's only a 78 in routes. And uh, for those not familiar with this, it's on a zero to a hundred scale. So it's 
pretty noticeable drop off there. So while I do think this horse will lead, I'm pretty much dismissing him as a contender here. Uh, the trainer being one reason uh, among others, but that that's the big one is I don't think this is a strength and the horse just hasn't been as fast as a couple others in here. A uh, more interesting horse is the one we show second in the uh, pace projector, much better. Uh, you might look at his past performances and wonder why he's shown second. Uh, he's been running on turf. He was pretty far back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile turf last time. Didn't make much of a run. But you can see his other races, he's shown a high level of speed. And he did have a bit of, of an excuse last time at the start. He kind of got shoved back at the end. I uh, tried to make a run and ran out of gas on a very yielding turf course at Churchill that day. So while, it, you know, his PPs may be, be a bit deceiving, I do expect this other Bob Baffert horse to show quite a bit of speed in here and be right up on the lead. Uh, now, the horse most people are going to be interested in and probably the one that's going to wind up being the heavy favorite. Uh, you can see he went off two to five last out. One easily by six and three quarter lengths breaking his maiden at Del Mar is uh, Coliseum. Uh, a lot of people waiting for this race, and he's one. He's he's not going to shock me if he wins, but but I'm not in love with this horse for a couple of reasons. I think he'll be definitely be an underlay in here. Uh, part of it, you can see, set a really slow pace. It wasn't much of a field at all. He did draw off the win. He got a 111 final time figure, but we knocked that down to a 104 because of the slow pace. And one thing I like to do with horses like this is look at the chart and see what's happened with the, ra uh, the race going forward, who's come out of it. And so far, only one horse has run back. That was yet another Bob Baffert trained horse, uh, figure eight. And you can see in the chart that he came back and he went off two to five uh, his next time out at Los L in a maiden race. And, and he just didn't run well at all. Uh, he got beat. He wound up finishing last. He didn't set overly taxing fractions. Uh, his speed figure dropped from a 96 to an 89. Not a big surprise for a horse that went from running second to running last. But it does give me a little pause about that race that maybe it wasn't very strong. So, the, Although Coliseum will be a worthy favorite, he's one I'm willing to take a small stand against. Uh, the one I'm going to do that with is Gun, Gunmetal Gray, trained by Jerry Hollendorfer. Uh, he, he's run against much better competition so far. Uh, you can see he broke his maiden easily first time going long. Then the last two times he tackled uh, the soon-to-be-named two-year-old Eclipse Award winner, uh, game winner. He finished second to him in the uh, American Pharaoh Stakes that's in. And he did. Then he went to Churchill, tried him in the Breeders' Cup. Uh, drew a, a bad post and got the trip you would expect from there being wide on both turns. I uh, didn't really make a dent late, but I'm willing to put a big line through that race and just look back at the others, which give him the best speed figures in here. So for this race, while I'm not a uh, huge on gunmetal gray, I'm hoping to get around five to two on him in this field. Uh, if I do that, I would make a win bet on him. Uh, if I had to play him in horizontals, I, it would be him and lean lesser on uh, Coliseum. Who, you know, he is, like I said, it won't surprise me if he wins, but I feel he's going to be a bit of an overlay and worth taking a shot against. So that's it. I'm going to go with uh, Gunmetal Gray for this week. And uh, that's it. And now we'll go to a word from our sponsor before more out of the gate. DRF Sports Forum Digital Edition, your ultimate weekly betting guide. Published by Daily Racing Forum, DRF Sports Forum delivers all of the analysis and insight you need for every NFL game and more than 40 college football matchups. Beat the spread with powerful trends and sharp angles. Tap into best bets, expert picks, parlay winners, and more. All for just $4.99 per issue. Get this week's edition free. Visit drf.com slash sportsforum. Enter code DRF Sports. Are you a horse player looking to raise your game? For over 120 years, expert handicappers have relied on Daily Racing Form as their must-have source for news and data, featuring exclusive buyer speed figures, Time Form US pace figures, and integrated replays. DRF Formulator is the most powerful handicapping tool on the market today. Use what the pros use. Go to drf.com slash formulator and enter code DRFTV to get your first card free. drf.com. Raise your game. Welcome back to Out of the Gate. Let's throw up the field for one of the feature races at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Several stakes races at Gulfstream. You can catch the expanded stakes previews for all of them on video.drf.com or the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel. We cover every horse in every stakes race. The Mucho Macho Man has a field of six. It is a one-turn mile carded as race number 10. $100,000 is the purse. Matt, the fastest horse 
in the race, according to Mr. Buyer, Trophy Chaser, 96 Buyer earlier this year. And you kind of know what Trophy Chaser's game is. You know, speed, speed, speed. You're going to send and try to take the field gate to wire like he did. We're going to take a look at the maiden score for him. Three starts back. Now, there's a couple things that went on in this race that I think led to this number being as giant as it was the 96. Sloppy track. Obviously, that probably worked to his advantage considering it's the fastest race he's ever run. Time form had the fractions all color-coded blue, so he was out there on a relatively easy lead in the grand scheme of things. And look... He faced better horses in each of his past two starts. He didn't run well in the Champagne, but in the grand scheme of things, I didn't think he ran terribly in that street sense most recently. No match for improbable, but we know how good he is. If they let him go, I, I wouldn't be stunned if he wired this field. I don't love him in here, but I wouldn't be stunned if he ended up pulling a minor upset. Michael Horse with a lot of upside that drew an ideal outside post position is Mihos. You think he can pull a mild upset? Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Obviously, it feels like Code of Honor is going to be the horse to beat here, but that horse is... Um, things haven't gone great for Code of Honor since the Champagne, so I wonder if we're catching him at the right time. And at the end of the day, I like both of Miho's starts so far. He debuted um, back in September, a very strong maiden race at Belmont, won by Vacoma. Second place finisher also looks like a nice horse. Mihos was third to them, but I think he ran well. And then he came back for a second start, and he did this. Lasix on for the first time. He sat in behind the leaders early, and then Rajiv Mirage just took him to the outside. He comes wide to the stretch, and I like the run he puts in from here to the wire, guys. He goes right by this field in the stretch. You see the runner-up is getting through down on the inside. There's nothing wrong with that horse either, but Mijos just too much for him. I thought this horse ran really well, and I just wonder if he's not catching Code of Honor at the right time. This horse, I think, might have a bit of a future. Yeah, I'm on board with Mijos as well. I agree with you. He's geared down there. You see at that point, the race is all said and done, but I like the fact that also, I think from a speed figure standpoint, you can make the case that he might be a little bit faster than the buyers would suggest. Time form is rated each of his first two starts slightly faster than the buyers have, the corresponding numbers anyway. So I think there's a real scenario where Mijos really isn't that far off from a horse like Code of Honor. And like Mike said, maybe you're catching Code of Honor at the right time. Code of Honor missed the Breeders' Cup Juvenile due to illness, and then he missed a scheduled appointment in the Remsen Stakes when trainer Shigmige, he believed he wasn't training up to par. I think he's caught the right field for the Mucho Macho Man Stakes. He was a debut winner at Saratoga going gate to wire. You don't see many McGahee trained two-year-olds do that in their first start. Then in the Champagne, they were expecting him to be close to the pace off that debut gate to wire victory. And just look what happens coming out of the gate. He goes right to his knees and he ends up being last down towards the inside and eating a lot of dirt. He still comes wide on the turn. He's going to finish second to the gate to wire winner complexity. This was a good effort from Code of Honor second time out. He is going to have to deal with the layoff. But I understand that you guys are saying maybe we're catching Code of Honor at the right time. I don't think Shug can afford to play catch up. I think he's got to get Code of Honor ready to go and ready to go right now. And I think Code of Honor is going to come with a good performance, unfortunately, at a relatively short price in the Mucho Macho Man Stakes. We'll move back to Southern California for turf action. The San Gabriel features a very competitive cast. Welcome back to Out of the Gate. Let's throw up the field for one of the feature races at Gulfstream Park on Saturday. Several stakes races at Gulfstream. You can catch the expanded stakes previews for all of them on video.drf.com or the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel. We cover every horse in every stakes race. The Mucho Macho Man has a field of six. It is a one-turn mile carded as race number 10. $100,000 is the purse. Matt, the fastest horse in the race, according to Mr. Buyer, Trophy Chaser, 96 Buyer earlier this year. And you kind of know what Trophy Chaser's game is. You know, speed, speed, speed. You're going to send and try to take the field gate to wire like he did. We're going to take a look at the maiden score for him three starts back. Now, there's a couple things that went on in this race that I think led to this number being as giant as it was the 96. Sloppy track. Obviously, that probably worked to his advantage considering it's the fastest race he's ever run. Time form had the fractions all color-coded blue, so he was out there on a relatively easy lead in the grand scheme of things. And look, he faced better horses in each of his past two starts. He didn't run well in the Champagne, but in the grand scheme of things, I didn't think he ran terribly in that street sense most recently. No match for improbable, but we know how good he is. If they let him go, I, I wouldn't be stunned if he wired this field. I don't love him in here, but I wouldn't be stunned if he ended up pulling a minor upset. Michael Horse with a lot of upside that drew an ideal outside post position is Mihos. 
you think he can pull a mild upset? Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Obviously, it feels like Code of Honor is going to be the horse to beat here, but that horse is, um, things haven't gone great for Code of Honor since the Champagne, so I wonder if we're catching him at the right time. And at the end of the day, I like both of Miho's starts so far. He debuted um, back in September, a very strong maiden race at Belmont, won by Vacoma. Second place finisher also looks like a nice horse. Mijos was third to them, but I think he ran well. And then he came back for a second start, and he did this. Lasix on for the first time. He sat in behind the leaders early, and then Rajiv Mirage just took him to the out side he comes wide to the stretch and I like the run he puts in from here to the wire guys he goes right by this field in the stretch you see the runner up is getting through down on the inside there's nothing wrong with that horse either but Mijos just too much for him I thought this horse ran really well and I just wonder if he's not catching code of honor at the right time this horse I think might have a bit of a future yeah, I'm on board with Mijos as well. I agree with you. He's geared down there. You see, at that point, race is all said and done. But I like the fact that also, I think from a speed figure standpoint, you can make the case that he might be a little bit faster than the buyers would suggest. Time form is rated each of his first two starts slightly faster than the buyers have, the corresponding numbers anyway. So I think there's a real scenario where Mijos really isn't that far off from a horse like Code of Honor. And like Mike said, maybe you're catching Code of Honor at the right time. Code of Honor missed the Breeders' Cup Juvenile due to illness, and then he missed a scheduled appointment in the Remsen Stakes when trainer Shigmige, he believed he wasn't training up to par. I think he's caught the right field for the Mucho Macho Man Stakes. He was a debut winner at Saratoga going gate to wire. You don't see many McGahee trained two-year-olds do that in their first start. Then in the Champagne, they were expecting him to be close to the pace off that debut gate-to-wire victory, and just look what happens coming out of the gate. He goes right to his knees, and he ends up being last down towards the inside and eating a lot of dirt. He still comes wide on the turn. He's going to finish second to the gate-to-wire winner, Complexity. This was a good effort from Code of Honor, second time out. He is going to have to deal with the layoff, but I understand that you guys are saying maybe we're catching Code of Honor at the right time. I don't think Shug can afford to play catch-up. I think he's got to get Code of Honor ready to go, and ready to go right now, and I think Code of Honor's going to come with a good performance, unfortunately, at a relatively short price in the Mucho Macho Man Stakes. We'll move back to Southern California for turf action. The San Gabriel features a very competitive cast. Let's throw up the field for the co-feature at Santa Anita on Saturday. This is a turf route for older horses. The Grade 2 San Gabriel Stakes, $200,000 is the purse. They're going nine furlongs on the lawn. This race carded as race number seven. For expanded stakes previews of many of the major races all weekend long, plus lots, lots more, head on over to video.drf.com or the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel. Mike, next chairs, Grade 1 Stakes winner at Keeneland, two starts back. Do you think the improved was spurred by a little bit of give in the ground. Probably won't get that at Santa Anita on Saturday. I mean, it could have been a little bit of give in the ground, but look at a Shadwell Turf Mile right now. This is a grade one upset for this horse. You're going to see him come right up the inside and get up at 23 to 1, but he actually wins this race pretty easily. And listen, guys, it's not like this race came out of nowhere. This horse was twice grade one placed with triple digit buyers earlier in the year, so it's not like he isn't a good horse. This is obviously his signature win. Um, I'm not going to worry about course condition with him. I'm going to worry more about the nine for ones. He feels more like a miler to me. Um, so we'll see if the nine for ones works against him. But listen, this horse has had a, very quietly had a very good 2018. Matt Flamboyant won this race at a gigantic price in 2016, sort of his coming out party that day. Runner up in this race to the good it's in the post last year. You believe he's coming into this race in good form yet again? Well, I think even probably better than maybe it looks at face value, and that's saying something considering he just finished third in his most recent start, the Berkeley. But we're going to go back to that and take a look at the start as well as the stretch run. Let's start off with the beginning. You're going to look toward the outer portion of the gate. He's going to get body slammed right there in that spot shadow. And I wouldn't have faulted him at all if he had packed it in after that. We've seen worse situations or lesser situations actually compromise a horse's chances. And guess what? All he did was continue on after being about seven wide coming off the far turn. Now, look. Here is the part that you need to be concerned about with a horse like Flamboyant, what you're looking at right now. He's finished third 11 times in his career from 38 lifetime starts, and really it still looks like he has no business losing this race. Forget about losing it, he doesn't even finish second. He finishes third in here. So I can understand anyone that looks at it and says, how can you trust a horse like Flamboyant? I think second off the bench, I think this distance a mile and an eighth works for him. He just needs a little bit of pace. I wonder if he's going to come in this in sneaky good fashion. I think he floats up considerably from the 5-1 to one morning line.
Mike, I've been chasing big score for a long time. I thought he ran well in the Shadwell Turf Mile at a gigantic price. I thought he ran well last time out in the Sea Biscuit. The best news for you and everyone else that's backing <laughs> big score on Saturday is that I'm off him and big money Mike Smith is on. Yeah, we've both been doing a little chasing this horse. I'm going to stick with him and give him one more chance in this race, though. This is a horse whose four-year-old campaign didn't go as planned. He only got four starts, and I actually feel like he ran pretty well in all of them, although I'm a little concerned he's lost all of his early speed or whatever early speed he had. Let's go back to the Seas Biscuit now, and you're going to see him. This is sort of where he's been uh, or where he was all year last year, last at the top of the stretch towards the inside. He'll get a lane to run through. He kicks on um, okay. And this was, I didn't love this performance for him, but I thought his races, uh, three races prior to that, were actually pretty good. And I think if you go back and look at the three times they went nine furlongs with him as a three-year-old, but they got him more into mid-pack trips. If he can get a trip like that, I feel like maybe he's in the right spot here. I just want to give him one more chance, guys. I don't know if he really wants nine furlongs, but this horse is going to be a price in this race, and I think he's better than he looks on paper. I'm with Matt in here on the six flamboyant, hoping he drifts up off the five to one. You saw the trouble that occurred with flamboyant at the start, and then the very wide sweeping move he took on the turn last time out at Golden Gate on the tapita surface. I think he's a better horse on on the turf. It is his second start off the layoff. And this race on paper appears paceless, but I have a feeling that Arms Runner on the far outside is in here to ensure the pace for an uncoupled stablemate. So there may be more pace than it appears. And flamboyant to closure that likes nine furlongs should be rolling in the end. I'll give him one more chance to become a two-time winner of the San Gabriel Stakes. David Aragona of Time Forum US. He's going to spotlight the sham stakes and then stay with us because we're going to come back for best bets on Saturday. Hi everyone, I'm David Aragona with this week's Time Form US Spotlight. We're going to take a look at one of the first derby preps of the 2019 season. Uh, it's the Grade 3 Sham on Saturday at Santa Anita. goes as race 9. Uh, there's a field of 7 for this race, and the headliner is the number 5 horse Coliseum. He was installed as the even money favorite on the morning line. There's a lot of hype around this Bob Baffert second time starter. We'll get to him in a little bit, but I want to start by taking a look at the Time Warm US pace projector for this race, because even though it's just a 7 horse field, there is a fast pace predicted, and Coliseum, who led all the way in his debut, is not predicted to be on the early lead. He is the number five horse. The number three, Savagery, is the one that's predicted to lead the field early. He's a pretty speedy horse for trainer Peter Miller, who has two runners in this field. He's putting blinkers back on after taking them off last time in the Los Alamitos Futurity, so he figures to be a little more keyed up in the early going. And also Bob Baffert's other horse, the number seven, much better, showed speed in his debut on dirt. He should be forwardly placed from the outside post position, so it doesn't seem like Coliseum is going to have that free ride on the front end like he did in his debut. We'll take a look at Coliseum's past performances because because he's just got that one race. It was very visually impressive. If you take a look at the replay, he just takes a, a commanding lead from the start, widens throughout. Joe Talma, who was on him that day, never really had to ask him for his best. Um, he just really did it under his own power. Now, he earned a pretty high buyer speed figure for that race. The time form US number of 104 is okay. It's not quite as high as the buyer was. And looking at the other runners in this field, a lot of them are lightly raced horses. I'm not really sure what was behind him. The second place finisher, figure eight, came back at one to two in his next start and disappointed badly finishing off the board. He lowered his time form US speed figure seven points off what he earned in Coliseum's maiden win. So I wonder if that field is really quite as strong as it seems as the speed figure suggested that it was. You see the F next to the race rating and the time form US past performances ind indicating that it was a race that was difficult to make a speed figure for because there were so many first time starters, horses with little form. So the 104 figure that we've given in it is um, a tentative figure. We're not 100% confident in its accuracy. Coliseum, though, there's been a lot of hype around him. He's trained very well in the mornings. Bob Baffert has had an absolutely stellar year with this crop of two-year-olds, now newly turned three-year-olds. So uh, typically when there's been hype, they've delivered, and Coliseum's another one of those. But this is a big step up in class. And Bob Baffert, if you look in DRF Formulator at his second-time starters running in graded stakes races off debuts on the dirt, he doesn't have the highest numbers. Um, the percentage is okay, but the ROI is pretty low in indicating these horses often get over bet. So I respect Coliseum's apparent talent, but I want to look at others in this race, especially if he's going to be close to that even money morning line. The main rival is the number six horse, Gunmetal Gray, and he's the one that I like. He's my pick in this race. Um, I just think he's a really solid alternative to Coliseum, who still has to prove that he's quite this good. Whereas Gunmetal Gray last year was second to game winner, the um, apparent two-year-old champion uh, after his Breeders' Cup win in the front runner, or in the American Pharaoh, I should say, last year. 
He was a distant second to game winner that day, but he thought he ran on well, clearly showed that he handled the mile 16th distance back in that late September race. He came back in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile last time, and if, it's worth watching the replay of that race because while he was a distant fifth that day, I didn't think he had the most comfortable trip. He got very far back in the early going, much farther back than I would assume Flavian Pratt wanted to be. Um, and coming around the far turn, where he's game winner just kind of looped around the field. It appeared that Gunmetal Gray just had trouble, you know, getting around traffic, getting into the clear, and he didn't really get uh, a clear path to run through until the top of the stretch. And he was actually coming on fairly well at the end, albeit without being a threat to the top three finishers who are well ahead of the rest of the field. I think Gunmetal Gray has no problem with distance. If anything, the mile distance of this sham might be a little bit short for him as he cuts back slightly, but he could be a little closer to the pace. I know the pace projector has him at the back of the pack. We'll see. He can be more of a mid-pack type runner, and I just think he's going to work out the right trip, especially if the fast pace materializes. And with Mike Smith getting aboard, that's not a, a negative whatsoever. So he's my pick in this race. And if he's anything close to that five to two morning line, I'm all in on this horse. Um, taking a look at two other alternatives, Bob Beffert's other horse, much better, who should also be relatively close to the pace. Uh, he won his debut on the dirt. They tried turf with him in two races since then. Just watching his action in those races and the way that he finished it up, he doesn't really strike me as a turf horse. He doesn't have that turfy turn of foot or that turfy way of going that makes me think that he really relishes that surface. So I do like him, or rather I'm intrigued by him getting back on the dirt here. He really does have more of a dirt pedigree, but behind the Nile, out of a grade two winning dirt sprinter, uh, the damn Dustin Diamond. So while he's got more of a sprint dirt pedigree, I'm interested in him getting to this one mile distance because he might be able to handle it. Uh, the question for him really is one of talent since his debut race on dirt is not nearly fast enough to contend with some of the top competitors in this race. And then the one other horse to take a look at is the number two horse, Bray Magician, who should attract a little bit of support all of his impressive maiden win last time at Del Mar. That was in late November, so he's coming back on about five weeks rest. Uh, I thought he was impressive that day, drawing off by nearly 10 lengths. Not a whole lot behind him, but he earned a pretty respectable 104 time form of speed figure, which is actually equal to the number the Coliseum earned in his debut. Uh, Gray Magician took about four starts to break his maiden, but he faced some really tough runners throughout the summer and the early fall uh, out in California, so I can excuse him for losing his first couple of starts. It was just hard to win those maiden races when Bob Baffert was sending out so many monsters. Uh, this horse should get a decent setup with some pace in front of him, including from his stablemate. Savagery posted just to his outside, so I think Gray Magician is one that can get in there, but he's probably going to just, uh, you know, now a minor award because I do really prefer the top two runners, Coliseum and Gunmetal Gray, and I'm giving the edge to Gunmetal Gray, the Jerry Hollendorf for trading the number six horse. So uh, that's a look at the sham on Saturday at Santa Anita. That goes as race time. I'll send it back to the studio. Time for our best bet segment here on Out of the Gate. Mike Byrne, Naira analyst. You got the feature at the Big A on Saturday. Yeah, the Laver Dodd for New York Prize. I'm going to take uh, the hot horse in here, pause for the cause. He's just a, a, a filly now four years old who I just think um, has started to finally figure it out. Um, it took her a while to get there, but she won two races in a row in races that were washed off the turf um, earlier in the year. And I think she's just gone forward from there. Her race two starts back in the Iroquois I thought was a good performance where she broke slowly and rushed up. Um, and then she came back and she ran in this race that we're going to show you right now, an open 1X allowance. She got a better trip in here, but she, again, she broke slowly from the rail, got herself into position, comes to the outside through the stretch, and she's just going to take this race over and stay on to the finish. I thought this was a good performance, pairing up 88 buyers, the two best races of her career on figures anyway. And I just think she's back in a, in a spot where she's supposed to be competitive once again, and I love that she's getting to the outside post this time, Dan. The rail in her last two starts, she didn't break great either time. Moving to the outside, I think, could really help the source. Matt, give me the Limehouse Stakes at Gulfstream for 200. Right, I like that. Race number two, Final Jeopardy is the horse's name, number six. Now look, here's the situation with this horse. Gulfstream, six furlongs on the main track, usually a little bit more conducive to speed than even some of the other main tracks in North America. This race, I think, makes me think that this horse could actually be something. We're going to take a look at the career debut for Final Jeopardy right now, not even on the screen right now. All of a sudden showing up on the far outside in those pink silks and just comes and absolutely blows the doors off this field coming from dead last. Now, there's a couple other things that you want to keep in mind. Not only the fact that this one kind of bucked the trend as far as the main track profile is concerned, but he goes off and wins by more than five lengths. The runner-up that day was a next out winner with a 66 buyer speed figure. The sixth place finisher came back and earned a 66 in his next start. I have to be honest with you guys, maybe I'm a little bit crazy. I think Final Jeopardy could be a player in a race like the Mucho Macho Man, should they have chosen to go there. Instead, they come here. I think this is a nice stepping stone. There's plenty of pace in here. Only thing is, he's 5-2 to two on the morning line. I'll be stunned if he's much more than even money, but I think he's the most likely winner of this race. It's the rare dueling best bet on Out of the Gate, and I'm up against... 
the Naira Analyst, a tall task to be sure. I'm going to go with Buy Self in the La Verdad Stakes. This replay is going to look familiar because Buy Self couldn't beat Mike Beer's Saturday best bet when they faced most recently. I thought Buy Self down inside on the turn, maybe shuffled back a little bit at the 3 8 pole. It looks like he's going to start to run here and he's going to find these three horses right in front of him. So he's going to ease to the outside eventually and he doesn't get truly clear, not truly clear yet. Now he's going to get to the outside of the winner. And now he's truly clear, and he's going to come with an okay late run. All this in his first start for Michelle Nevin and his first start off of a short layoff. Like Mike's top pick, he gets an outside post position. I think he'll work out a stalking trip. Unlike Mike's horse, he's relatively lightly raced. I think that he has maybe a little bit more upside, and perhaps he'll be a slightly better price. So my best bet is also in the Lava Dodd Stakes. It is with buy self. We thank you so much for watching Out of the Gate, and we urge you to follow all of DRF TV's latest offerings on social media. Follow on Twitter at DRF Video, and for the latest news and notes from America's Turf Authority Daily Racing Forum, follow on Twitter at DRF Inside Post. That's it for this week. Best of luck when your horses break out of the gate.